What would you like to improve in your Tesla or in your electric car? You can play along as me and my guest Eli Burton of my Tesla adventure is going to go over his top five list of things that he would like to see Tesla do for its customers going into 2020. Tesla had a really good year. Uh, Model Y unveiling, uh, the pickup truck unveiling, um, only getting sued by SEC only once. But uh, overall, it's been a really good year, especially for the numbers. Yes, I know the stock is not where everybody wants it to be, but the numbers are keep going up. Uh, yes, there was a little bit of a, a hiccup in Q1, but that brought Tesla to China and Europe uh, and, and, and Model 3 and Model Y uh, coming out of the factory in Shanghai next year. So um, this, this was a good year. But, you know, as I approve pretty much all posts in my uh, Facebook groups for Tesla owners, and now it's grown over 35,000 members, I still, still see a lot of frustration from customers uh, because Tesla is just so busy growing as a company, um, as it always unfortunately is the case. Um, customers feel abandoned, customers feel that there are some features they want to get. Uh, I have my list as well that I might share, but uh, today obviously Eli Burton uh, is going to share his. And I got to tell you, a couple of uh, things on his, well actually not a couple, most of the things on his list um, are pretty surprising, but um, let's see if you share his uh, concerns and wishes. So we're going to kind of do a, a 2020 New Year's resolution list here. Uh, before we do that, before I bring Eli, a quick reminder that this video on this channel is sponsored by a Climate Exchange. Their raffle, their Tesla raffle is back. Uh, buy a ticket and have uh, one in 4,000 uh, uh, chances to win a, a Tesla of your choice. Any configuration up to $195,000. So that's pretty cool. Plus, this is a nonprofit organization. So you'll be contributing to a really good cause. Go to carbonraffle.org to get your ticket today. They are back this year as well. They had a great raffle last year and this one's going to happen in February. All right. So without further ado, uh, let me bring uh, Eli and we're going to go through uh, his list right now. Eli, how you doing, my friend? Alex, doing well, man. Great to be back on your show as always. Well, good to have you. And you know, uh, this is exciting because we are actually not covering the news particularly. We're just uh, wishing on the star. Uh, though I think these things that, I mean, I already saw your list because obviously I had to make graphics for it. But, um, you know, these are real concerns from uh, real customers like yourself. But just like I said, um, I approve all the postings for my Facebook groups and I see a lot of them echoed there. So uh, let me ask you, generally speaking, do you feel like you're happier as a Tesla customer this year than you were previous year? And, you know, you do have a newer Tesla this year that you bought a Raven, Raven uh, Model S earlier this year. Yes, I'm definitely happier with my Tesla experience this year than last year. And to be honest, part of that is due to some of the benefits I gained by upgrading. All right. Uh, well, what, what are the, let's say, top three things that you're enjoying more than you used to as a customer? So one of the big ones is, and it was subtle, it was a subtle jump, but it, it overall has a pretty significant net impact is I noticed immediately when going from hardware two to hardware version three of autopilot, that even on the same build of software, that my new car handled all the same situations much more smoothly. So that was a big one. The other one was getting to go from MCU one to MCU two. So there are the number of features that started piling up that and, and capability and speed of MCU two just being way better than MCU one. So at MCU one, like I didn't have sentry mode that could store video, didn't have dash cam that could store video. And there's some new features that have come out in V10 that MCU one didn't have. So now that I'm on MCU two, I have all those things. All right, cool. So. Listen, I, I've, unfortunately, I don't have a, a Tesla anymore, so I can't really uh, share the enthusiasm. Though when I ride in your Tesla, I see the differences, I, 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 and I see how much more excited you are. But all right, let's get to your list. And is this in a particular order or no particular order? I think this list is in, in a particular order. All right, so let's get to number one. Yeah, so number one that... I think Tesla owners would love to see, especially ones who've invested in this full cell driving, is to actually see the unveiling and the deployment of uh, the full self driving feature that can handle stoplights and intersections. Now, I got to put a caveat on it. Obviously, in the beginning of in 2020, I don't think it's going to be reasonable that Tesla will be able to deploy those features and give you the option to take your hands off the wheel. However, 
I do think it's reasonable and I do think we want to see those features come out, even if we still have to be in control of the vehicle, because it still completely changes and improves the driving experience. All right. Uh, and well, so what are your predictions on that? Like, what do you think? How far do you think they can get uh, uh, next year? Like realistically, obviously. My predictions is that we will get to see all the feature set that will be in full self-driving, uh, at least where lanes are involved. So side streets, uh, intersections, stoplights, roundabouts. I think we're going to see those features get deployed, but I think we will just still be required to have our hands on the wheel and have that kind of autopilot nag because it won't be uh. truly certified for autonomous driving. It'll still be in that driver assist phase, but I want those features in driver assist phase. I want those features where they're still in beta, but safe enough to deploy because that is, that is the final step in the full self-driving picture that everybody's been waiting to see. And I think it's going to be huge for Tesla to be able to sell their cars because that's one of the things right now where people are like, oh, why would I buy that feature? But once, once people can actually show it doing something that autopilot can't really can't do, that's really drastic. Again, like stoplights and intersections, that's going to really start getting people on board with this full self-driving. All right. I hope they can do it. I mean, I, you know, we, we already talked about the, 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 the smart summon that was a bit of a disappointment for uh, maybe super geeks and, and people who are really putting high hopes on it. Um, I know they're going to improve it, but that does not give me too much of a hope that they're going to do a, a really good job on a street level because we're talking about, you know, you're not going to be able to just bump into a tree on a curve. You know, you can cause a major accident if you if you miss a red light. So but so I, I hope they'll take their time, uh, um, you know, before releasing that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, the, the 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 margin of error you can have when red lights and stop signs are involved is much lower than something you're summoning across the parking lot at less than three miles per hour. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's move on to number two. So number two, the MCU upgrade. So this is something that Tesla owners have been really chiming in about on social media and Twitter, especially recently. And you know, Elon promised a while ago that. MCU one Tesla owners will be have will get the option to upgrade to MCU two. And recently a lot of people have been asking him about it. And he finally responded this past week and said, yes, working on it, it's coming. So what's driving this is there's been a loss in feature set for MCU one folks because it can't support the ability to store video for dash cam, store video for sentry mode. That's a pretty valuable feature for people who want to protect their car. Um, but the one that's really getting people to be vocal now is uh, the V10 comes with a media center that has YouTube, Netflix, Hulu. And for people who have MCU one, those functionalities don't work. And so what needs to happen for people to upgrade? Is it at cost? Do you, you know, what, what's the issue, the cost or the just availability and being able to schedule a service center appointment? Because I know all of this has, has been a problem to customers in the past. So it will come with a cost. What the cost is, is currently unknown. Uh, the reason that it doesn't exist at Tesla right now is they have to be producing a bunch of extra screens that they deploy to service centers for those upgrades. And as I understand, the logistics piece of that haven't been put together yet. All right, fair enough. So um, now let's move on to number three, which uh, is uh, superchargers. The V3 superchargers have been announced, you know, um, a few months ago, but... Um, what say you as far as uh, how important they are to launch in uh, 2020? So I think V3 superchargers is a really big deal because two reasons, especially in highly concentrated areas like California, where we just have an insane number of Tesla owners, supercharger usage is going way up. And V3 superchargers will really increase the amount of capacity that these superchargers can handle because they get cars through so quickly. And as an existing owner, you know, I've got the Raven Model S P100D and I can charge up to 200 kilowatts. And I part of, you know, one of the pieces of the decision making factor for me on buying that car is being able to go from a max of 120 to 200 is a lot less time on the road when I do have to supercharge. So I'm really excited to see more V3 superchargers out there. So when I do have to supercharge, I can spend mere minutes getting the range that I want to have. And again, it's also going to decrease the impact of the load of all the new cars on the network. So I think V3 supercharging is going to be a really big one. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would agree. To me, that would be one of the number one things that, you know, charging has been. This is the reason I bought a Volt even when I had a Tesla, because I just had no time to supercharge. Added a, you know, I usually, if I did drive my Tesla somewhere, it was Los Angeles, added an hour and a half to my trip was not was not okay uh, especially me trying to get into town to avoid traffic around two or three in the morning and 
being there at four in the morning is a little bit pushing for me, actually a lot pushing for me. So I um, absolutely agree with you. And of course, you're right. You know, the supercharger is getting crowded. So get more people out of there much quicker um, definitely is going to uh, make a big difference. Um, all right, let's talk about uh, the next one, which is um, which is uh, loaner cars. Explain. Yeah. So this is one I hear people complain about fairly often too. And it's only by the people who end up going into service, which a lot of Tesla owners rarely have to do. Like I think they took my car into service for something once or twice over two years. And it was for super small things that back then they would take it into service. But now with mobile service, any of those issues I had in the past, I would never even take it into a Tesla store. For the people that do have to take it in for service for any extended period of time, there's a couple of things that people would like to see. One, Tesla have enough loaner cars that when people do need a loaner car, that they get a Tesla and don't have to go to an ICE car. I had that happen once a long time ago and I was actually pretty upset because I had just gotten the car and had a, something that came up really early on. And I went from driving this amazing machine of the future to having to drive some Buick. And that really wasn't a fun experience. Again, it only happened once to me, wasn't a huge deal, but I've seen a lot of customers really not be happy that they didn't get to continue to have the same driving experience that they've been used to. And then one of the other pieces of that too is Elon promised a while ago that all of the loaner cars would be performance, whether they be performance model three or performance model S. And I think it's a great selling tactic because when you get a loaner car, that's a performance. It definitely makes you, it makes it a little harder to go back to your car if it wasn't a performance. And, so I and think it owners, makes you actually like to look forward. More cars and then be performance cars. So people, when they turn their car for loaners, they can get the best premium experience that Tesla has to offer. Yeah. And instead of dreading going to the service center, you kind of, because I remember that at first, that's what they did. And I looked forward saying, okay, yeah, all right. I, my car broke down. I got, I got a service appointment. I'm going to get to drive a really cool upgraded version of my car. So that was exciting. And now you go like, oh, am I going to get a Mustang or, you know what I mean? So I, uh, you're absolutely right. This does need to happen. As you know, I really think service has been the number one reason for me to leave the brand and I think for the most of the complaints out there. So learner cars, absolutely. So, totally. And I think it's par for the course being a premium luxury brand. Yeah, absolutely agree. All right. What's the last one? Number five. All right. So this is one that a lot of owners have been looking for. And I think now that we have this new functionality coming and all the new cars having the 4G LTE chips and I think 5G is even coming on these things that having the ability to have a mobile hotspot on your vehicle. And I get a lot of people who don't own Teslas ask me about that, be like, oh, can you use the Wi-Fi? And it's like, no, you can't right now. Right now the Wi-Fi is just for the car, but it would be great to be able to pay for even a service plan to be able to tether off of your vehicle. Whether you be supercharging, stopped, out places, I would love to have, I would totally pay for the option for Tesla internet so that I can use that when I charge or other locations. And I think as the vehicle gets closer and closer to full self-driving, I think we'll see that get rolled out because once you're in full self-driving, having the ability to tether from your car is amazing, right? Because I'll be doing all my work on my laptop, watching, doing whatever I need to do on my computer, anywhere I go while my car drives. And I would definitely love to tether from my car instead of tethering from my phone. All right. I, I, I agree. Uh, now, let me uh, let me also add maybe a couple of things also to that list. I remember, and the problem is still there, I believe, is um, uh, text messaging. I mean, I'm driving, a, I'm driving a freaking vault and I have a text messaging feature where the text messages can be re re read out to me and I can, with voice commands, you know, send a text message back. Um, and also, I know Tesla cannot just install those little lights on the mirrors, but there are ways how you can do it with the with the monitor, even if you have the uh, Model 3 where there's just only one in the middle. I feel like they can definitely make that feature a little bit at least a little bit usable, especially if you use sounds and not just a visual. So to me, those two are so far behind that they just must appear j just just to be even with the vault, you know. Um, but service, I really, 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 really hope they can uh, get that. If not right, then definitely better next year. Yeah, I think there's a lot of improvements they've made this year, which is why we've seen less stories about it. But yeah, they still have they still have further to go to really make it the excellent service that people are going to expect for paying a lot of money for these cars. Yeah, and that's and I think that's the biggest uh, biggest you know pet peeve here with a lot of people is that you know it's 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 supposed to be premier brand, so people expect premier service to go with the brand. But right now, it's not really a match. All right, so but speaking about Tesla experience. Let's talk about what uh, you are have already organized, and I'm going to join you. Uh, what couple of weeks? Tell us, tell yeah, us a little so bit. What? 
What we have coming up on October 26 is our next My Tesla Adventure event. It's going to be a meetup in Mountain View, California. We're going to meet up at the Tesla Superchargers at the Computer Science Museum. We'll meet up in the morning, spend about an hour there, let everyone get charged up. Then we're going to drive a uh, really beautiful drive through the kind of windy roads of the hills and the mountains there, going all the way down to Moss Beach, where we've got a private room booked up at a, the Moss Beach Distillery. We're all going to hang out, have lunch, have a great time together. Uh, our events, these events are a lot of fun and they all sell out. So there's only a handful of tickets, uh, seats left available. So if you're interested in coming, check out the event. I think Alex will have a link to this, to the event in the video, but you can also find more about it at facebook.com slash my Tesla adventure. Yeah. And I can't wait, man. This is, this is going to be a good time. I think with uh, most of the time, I know we've been so busy. Most of the time we see each other is doing this. When, when we see each other, everybody see us seeing each other but this time around we'll 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 have a we'll have fun i know every single event that you had i really really enjoyed so looking forward to that and of course uh the link to uh your website and your uh podcast is also in the description of this video all right man thank you for the list and those of you who are watching play along in the comment section of this video we want to know what your resolution list is for your tesla or whatever electric car you are driving so uh uh, thanks for hanging out with me, man. I will uh, I will see you next time. Thanks, Alex. And don't forget to stay charged. All right. He's already ahead of me. But um, just like I said, this is uh, this is the event. If you're if you're in Northern California, must attend. And it's always a memory, not just not just an uh, an experience. Of course, I want to remind you guys that uh, don't forget to subscribe to our VIP list, which is free. Uh, and it is a bit, of a, a bit of an adventure as well. We send you a bonus story at the end of each week. You don't know what it's going to be. It's just something that I wasn't able to cover throughout the week. Um, so go to e4electric.com slash VIP. All right, if you haven't started already, start uh, uh, start uh, dreaming and putting the the uh, your resolutions in the description of this video. Other than that, see you next time. And remember to stay charged. Music